right. Good evening. I wrote it all down so that I don't ramble too much because um, sometimes I can talk a little longer than I should. Um, I wanted to share with you all tonight my testimony for a few reasons. One, you are my family. Family is so much more than blood, who your daddy is, etc. Family is the people that take you for who you are, no matter what, the good and the bad pieces, and still hold them as if they are a great treasure. That family I have found here. Two, is, as Chris mentioned, we've been doing an evangelism series with our youth, averaging about 14 teenagers each and every week. They have shared themselves in class, and some will be sharing with all of you over the next few months. These kids are some of the most precious gifts in my life and my family. I would never ask them to do something that I wasn't bold enough to do myself. So here it goes. When I was young, I wasn't raised in the church. We didn't go to church, except for funerals and an occasional wedding, I guess. I grew up an Air Force brat. We did lots of things as a family, but church was not one of them. My parents divorced when I was about 10, I think, and God gave me a wonderful stepdad later on, but he too was not the church type. Although not raised in the church, I can tell you now, God has saved me more times than I will ever know. Amen. Some know this about me and some do not, but as a teen in my later years, I quickly became an alcoholic. Our house was a host house, and as, and as so, we partied every weekend. Every weekend, as I continued to get older, wasn't enough. It turned into a few days a week, plus all weekend. I was an excellent student, all around college prospect, graduated with as many awards as our valedictorian and more scholarships than our top athlete. I went to college, drank even more, left my longtime boyfriend and all my friends at home. They got into drugs and other extracurriculars here. Um, I was a freshman at Clemson and now no longer a public drinker, but alcohol is how I survived. Homesick, six months of shin splints, gave up my full ride ROTC scholarship and came home for my parents, for my boyfriend, my friends that were lost in their journey, and everyone but myself. The next bit of life, I couldn't tell you how I made it home, how I drove, how my car made it back. I woke up with busted blood vessels across my face from alcohol poisoning, discovered I was allergic to vodka. It's not something I advise finding that you're allergic to. I drank a bit to function, drank a bit to get through class, drank even more to get through job number one and job number two, and to hang with my friends and the longtime boyfriend I thought I still needed, not always knowing where I had been or why I was still here and alive. God, right? Only by the grace of God, if I had known what a relationship with him would have done for my life then. I, by God's hand, ran into my now husband, Sean, in a bar. Great place for an alcoholic. Um, hadn't seen him since middle school, maybe once or twice during high school. I ran from him forever. I went back to other previous boyfriends several times. He was always there, made me laugh, and reminded me who I was without all the junk in my life. And most of you that know him well will find this very ironic, but he took me to church on a Sunday. A small family church in Honey Hill the man I had been running from led me to exactly where I was supposed to be all along. We were the youngest people there besides one member's granddaughter that came sometimes. His Aunt Grace was the piano player, but was ill and I never actually got to hear her play, although she would make a huge impact in my life. There I met Reverend Deborah Dowdle and God changed my life. I committed my life to Christ. I jumped in with both feet. I became a lay speaker, taught classes across the county to adults and to youth to become lay speakers in the church. I planned and conducted youth retreats, trips. I did my very first of many sermons there in two sister churches on that same charge, preaching three times in a row every Sunday that I filled in. I was on the way to dedicating my life as a minister in the United Methodist Church. I was on the way to a ministry degree transferring from tech to CSU I was baptized there and later married Sean there as well. But life got in the way, and I put my running shoes back on. We had moved to Goose Creek. My pastor had also been moved to a larger church in Goose Creek. I became the youth director there and was still teaching, and we were blessed with Gracie. Sean never went to church with us there, unless I was preaching or the day Gracie and Hunter were baptized. 
So after a while, I wrongly chose my husband, my life, over my relationship with God and my church. We then moved to Macedonia, and although I recovered from alcoholism before I was even married, the same feeling of being lost is where I found myself. But now also as a wife and a parent, and shortly a parent of two when God gave us Hunter. This time I didn't go back to drinking. Depression was the devil's tool. I was lost for a really long time. Sean started having health problems. We lost our home twice. I blamed and was angry at God for my circumstances and was so detached that I could not even see a glimpse of light to find my way out. I was a believer. I knew God existed. I knew the things he had saved me from and yet was still angry in what I had gotten into and felt he had let me get into. I made it my journey in life to always be the provider for my family. That as long as I worked, worked, and worked some more and provided for my family that we would be okay. Vowed we'd never lose our home again, never be without what we needed. That that purpose was enough for me. God didn't agree. He led me to scouts, which eventually led me here. Led me to McCorder, who I had known from camp, but didn't even know he was a youth pastor, much less that he lived in my same community. Still, we did scouts here, and we went home. We didn't attend here. We didn't attend anywhere. I couldn't even tell you how, how but Gracie started coming to youth here. Danny had been trying to get us here for years. Then three years ago, Sean had to have a triple bypass. I remember Danny coming to the hospital to pray with us. I remember talking with him at some point and him telling me that I have to do what is right for myself, my children, so that hopefully he, being my husband, would follow. I think I had come to visit prior to that, but I was a pew warmer. I was here for roll call. I wasn't active. I didn't care enough or was too uncomfortable beyond my bubble to even know what to do. God saved me again. I started coming every Sunday, getting to know people, getting to know Chris, getting my kids here. Even then, I was still torn. God worked it out. I kept doing what I was doing. God brought Sean through surgery, through everything, and in time, next to me in a pew every Sunday. Over time, he has brought me closer to my family here. My kids have family here. He has gotten all three of us, not just in a pew, but involved, pushed, stepping out of our box and into the light for his glory. Into speaking up and speaking out, studying his word, having a closer relationship with each other and with him. He has led Gracie to praise Van and toward her ministry and purpose. Her and Hunter both to friendships, mentors, and so much more that I could never offer them. My husband and I still aren't equally yoked, as Chris would say. We are still in different places in our relationship with God. But through being here, my studies and my family here, I know that I am meant to be a testimony for him and that I have to be who God made me to be for myself, my children, and for my husband so that someday he will be the man God, had, God made him to be as well. To sum it up, God saved me way before I knew he existed. Still saved me when I ran away from him because we are not perfect. We aren't meant to be perfect. God gave his only son to die for us anyway. For each and every one of us, no matter your circumstances, no matter your sin, I still struggle and want to run. And as I like to say, God likes to slap me in the face because I'm stubborn and question everything in life. But I'm no longer an alcoholic. I no longer constantly battle depression. God has put me to work, and as long as I keep my eyes on him, I can handle anything. Because God has a plan and a purpose for us all.